Hey everyone, some of you might recognize me. My name is Noah Bacon and I'm the community manager here at Bigger Pockets. Today I wanted to take some time to share with you my story as how I became a rookie investor by house hacking my first property as a full-time student, technically unemployed and qualified for a conventional mortgage without actually ever getting my first paycheck. And I'll tell you a little bit how here. Today I want to talk about what type of property that I was looking for and the intent I had when I was uh, in the contract process. Listening to the Bigger Pockets podcast, the term house hacking was thrown around so much, and I had no idea what that could possibly mean. So after months and months of educating myself, I decided, okay, I need to move on either a small multifamily or I need to find a single family home that had extra bedrooms that I could rent out and try to offset my mortgage. So it was funny that I was uh, actually in college and advised to buy the property I was living in and rent it out to my college roommate. I think it would have been a an amazing idea, but I waited just a little bit and I'll, I'll get into the reasons why I did that and some of the fun processes that it took to acquire that. You know, I just didn't really know where I was going to go after college. I knew I didn't want to stay in a city anymore after, you know, just being cooped up for about two years. So I, I luckily got a job out in Colorado Springs and I uh, was starting the hunt to find my house out in Colorado Springs while I was living in Pennsylvania. So I was, again, very fortunate. I found Bigger Pockets resources and stumbled upon the forums and put out my first post. Hey, I'm, I'm Noah. I'm a 19 or 20 year old, 21 year old looking for property out in Colorado. I essentially know nothing. I need to find the right professionals to give me the right resources and push me in the right direction. And I luckily found my realtor on there. And while I was living in, again, in Philadelphia, I had a couple of FaceTimes, got to get a feel for what the remote process would look like. Luckily, he set me up with a really great lender. We figured out how we could possibly get a conventional mortgage while I was a full-time student and not even having a paycheck. So my initial uh, search was go ahead and look for the small multifamilies. So I decided to look for a duplex. I was actually under contract for a duplex, which was best news to me at the time. I thought everything was going to go perfectly in that 30 days of under contract. And then rates changed. I was locked in at three to three and a half percent rate, super low. And it shifted in the commercial space to five to five and a half. And it just totally killed my deal. So I had to completely alter my search and look for the single family home that had extra bedrooms as I was just one single guy moving here. And I thought extra bedrooms means cash flow that will mean I don't have to pay my mortgage a month. I went really intentional, set the search to anything that was above 1500 square feet over two bathrooms as I wanted my own private bathroom. And turns out I found a three bed, two and a half bath. I took the basement, which had a private bathroom. It was actually the biggest bedroom. I rented out my two rooms upstairs that had a shared bathroom for $750 a month. And my room again with the private of it. Um, I had the most luxury. Definitely wasn't the best for the cash flow on the deal. But for my time, it being my primary residence, I wanted to live as comfortably as I possibly could while I was calling my house a investment. So that was a little bit about the the breakdown of the property and why I was um, intentionally searching for something that was probably too big for me and too much space for me, which is a, a really funny thing to say out loud. The funny part about this whole story was I was a full-time student, technically unemployed and qualified for a conventional mortgage. And I'll tell you a little bit how here. So my job was taking me out to Colorado Springs. My degree was in healthcare management. I was lined up to work for a pretty major employer in the healthcare management space. So I started, I got an employee letter, sign the employment letter. I actually used that employment letter for my future income to qualify for the mortgage. Not employed at the time, did not have a paycheck and was waiting for my paycheck to come after I was closing on my property. The remote process was extremely weary and I lost a, a good amount of sleep over a couple nights. I, I went under contract for two properties and actually did not close on those properties. So I was I was very nervous that this, this whole process was, you know, I was in over my head. I was just too young. I didn't have enough money. I didn't have enough resources to get this done. But luckily I found property number three and we started to move forward and really just started seeing all of the inspections, seeing the appraisals from afar and having numerous FaceTimes with my realtor made me a lot more comfortable, but also I felt like you know, I wasn't physically there and I could be potentially missing out on something. The fun part about this whole story, wrapping it all up to the closing, was that I was actually at my parents' backyard the day after I graduated college. A mobile notary came to our porch and I had signed and closed on the property. So I'll go into a little bit of the uh, finances in that story because I know it probably sounds really uncomfortable common as a college student buying a, a property while he was essentially 
unemployed. Qualified all by myself. I didn't have any financial backing from anybody. So again, just going into the finances of the property, um, it was uh, 263000 It was listed at 250000 So definitely overbidding at the time. It was in May of 2021. So rates were at 3% and home values were skyrocketing and the sellers had all the power. So closing on the property, my mortgage came out to 1170 and then with HOA fees, 166 um, So I was hovering just around the 1300 all in monthly expense rate. I decided I was going to rent out my two bedrooms upstairs, both rooms for $750 a month, and I was going to cash flow a little bit on the property while I was living there. I was not making that much money at the time. I was only making forty five, and then promoted to $50,000 a year. So between the cash flow and the money that I was having, I wasn't by any means rich, by any means uh, a millionaire on paper or anything like that. I was really just a normal person graduating college and used my very average salary and my very average job to qualify for a mortgage. The tactics that I used to rent out the rooms were very successful, actually. I was at the time a full-time leasing manager. I had left my job with my health company and decided to take on a job with the realtor that I closed on the property with. And during that time, I was able to you know, work 40 hours a week, really understand the laws and the lease agreements in El Paso County specifically, but in the state of Colorado. During that time, took about a month and a half, really understood the law, really understood what I wanted to have in my leases and what I could do as a private landlord to look for my roommates. That period definitely was a lot of due diligence, definitely a little bit of luck. But again, having my professional experience in the space, it, it really helped me find tenants, but roommates that were very helpful with, with a lot of things down the line, as we'll talk about hopefully in some future videos. Just doing your due diligence on the leasing is not only going to save you from a headache with your roommates in the future, but as you're going to house hack and have an exit strategy in the future as well, you need to think about your, your seamless process of either kicking everybody out or keeping people people in there while you move out. So definitely a lot of things to think about when you are getting into that exit strategy as well when you are house hacking. Some things that I really learned from this process that I look back now, and at the time, I probably thought I could do everything and the world was mine, and why didn't I do this earlier? I think a, a very common response that we hear in our community is that I wish I started sooner. And I can honestly say I don't have that regret. I would have had the opportunity during the time in college, I could have potentially bought the property that I was living in from the landlord that I was talking to, rented out the rooms to my my roommates, but I was not happy in that location. It's not some place that I wanted to stay. So if you're extremely confident in the location that you're going to stay in after you graduate college, it would absolutely make sense to buy property while you're you're living there and you have boots on the ground and you have resources. But I was not very fond of the area. I didn't want to stay there long term. So I knew that this wasn't a place I wanted to uh, start an investment portfolio. So you do have to think about places that you want to go. There is a give and take. We are investors. You Every time that you have something that's going to be a luxury in your life, you're going to have to take an expense in it. And that's definitely what I decided to do. And that was an okay process. I was cash flowing fine. Sure, there was probably better opportunity and more cash flow appreciation plays that were back home. But again, just was not uh, the best for me. And I would recommend if you're not looking to do that immediately in college, you save up the money, you think about what your future is going to be after college, and then you aggressively put your resources into that location. And that's exactly what I've done. I've worked for a few property managers here. I've worked at Bigger Pockets now, luckily, as um, a fan of the company. And now it's an important piece of the company, I would say, as the community manager. It's been a, a very special time to figure out the location that you want to study the most and then go there. I'm a firm believer in in Colorado Springs and, and the relocation of a lot of jobs and the appreciation here. So this is definitely a place that I, I found a lot of interest to study in. I can honestly say growing up in the area I grew up in, I don't have any, if many, resources back in Pennsylvania from the real estate investor side. So again, being a firm believer in the place that you want to call home, location, location, location is extremely, extremely important as you're calling your investment property your primary residence at the same time. Well, this just about concludes my time and I really can't thank you all enough for watching today. This has been really fun to share my beginner journey of house hacking here, uh, moving from Pennsylvania to Colorado and starting my journey here with Bigger Pockets. Um, it's been really amazing and I cannot wait to meet a lot of you in person and hopefully here at BPCon in the near future. Um, again, I can't thank you enough for watching and if uh, you'd like to connect further, you can go to biggerpockets.com and go right to the forums and you'll find me on there. Or if you want to connect on social anywhere, it will be Macon Bacon REI. Go ahead and connect with me and it was a real pleasure to share these tips and tricks with you today.